Welcome everyone to another Landscape Build tutorial. I'm going to show you how to create groups by importing existing prefabs from your scene. Then we'll use these prefabs inside another group. If you haven't already watched the Group Basics video, I'd suggest you take a look at that first. I have a few rocks and a sheep around a tree. I'm going to highlight them in the scene. I'm going to my Groups tab and click Import. And I'm going to delete those existing prefabs from the scene. Going to rename my group Tree and Rock Group. We want to procedurally generate our groups along the side of this river, so I'm going to change the group type to subgroup. Let's see what it looks like in the group designer. We don't see our tree, let's just turn on auto refresh. Uh, this is off by default, but for a small group like this we can use auto refresh to see what's going on as we make our changes. We'll reduce the size of our group because it probably doesn't need to be this big. Let's just refresh that. We'll move our tree to the top of the list to give it priority. And let's reduce the proximity of that tree to let our other objects uh, be created closer. Maybe our group could be a little smaller still. So That's better. Let's close the group designer. We're going to add this new subgroup to a group I already have, which is my village group here. So I'm going to open the group designer for my larger manual clearing. And as it's a large group, let's just turn off auto refresh. There's quite a few members, so I'm just going to search for my river, show that, and edit the object path. On the objects tab, I'm going to add a new width based series and give it a unique name tree subgroup series. We're going to enable it to use subgroups and I need to add the subgroup that we've we created earlier. We're going to set the placement spline to right edge uh, which is actually the left hand side in our scene. If we had created a number of different subgroups to spawn along the riverbank, we could have we could add more to the list. Just like you can for regular prefabs. In our case, we only have one subgroup, so we're just going to use that. Let's place them 30 meters apart, and we'll offset them on the z-axis by maybe 12 meters from the edge of our from the right edge of our riverbank. We can either use a refresh button here next to our edit object path or we can use the context menu inside a group designer, just right click and say refresh path. And we can see some groups there that have been placed. But it's a bit difficult to see what's going on. So maybe we'll just um, zoom in a little And we'll turn off the surroundings for our river. And let's go and just turn off the other trees. So let's just look for those other trees, turn them off. And this time I'm going to refresh the whole group. Refresh designer. 
after a few seconds, you'll see we now can see the groups we've placed along the river path. But we don't want them up here or right down the end near our uh, by our river, so we're just going to adjust that. So let's go back to our river series and we have offset from the start and we're going to set that maybe to I know, 90 metres from the start and maybe like 30 metres in from the end of our river. And let's just refresh that. Okay, that's a little better. Um, and let's just see maybe the extent of where those are going to be placed. So let's go back into display and turn on subgroup extents. So now we can kind of see, you know, and there's a bit of overlap there. So we could either reduce the size of our group or maybe we could just make them a bit further apart. Maybe 35 metres apart and then just go and refresh the path again. Let's exit the group designer and have a look at what it looks like in our scene. So let's just uh, go down and apply those groups to the scene. Take a few moments and you can see we have now some groups, subgroups along the side of our river. But there's a bit of a problem. They kind of all look the same. Go back to our subgroup, open group designer. Let's enable auto refresh for our small group. And we want our objects to automatically move around within the group. So for the tree, Let's turn off place in center. And as we refresh the group, you'll see that the tree kind of moves around within the group. Now it's not quite what we want. We want to kind of, we want the tree to kind of remain roughly in the center but still be able to move around a little. So for that, we're going to go and create a new zone. Let's just make our zone a little smaller. So we want our tree to be in the zone. So in my group member, we're going to go to the zones tab and we're going to add in that zone. Now because it's the only one in our subgroup, automatically it gets populated. And now when you when we refresh the group designer, you'll see the tree re remains roughly in the center, which is what we're after. For rocks, we want to do something a little different. So let's just find our, our rocks. Um, and we'll expand them one at a time. So again, we don't want them to be stuck in the center. We want them to, be able to move around. And we want to randomize the offset on the y-axis because we want to want them to go up or down a little when they're um, placed on the terrain. So maybe half a meter, maybe that's too much. And we'll randomize the y rotation as well. Well that's just a do that for each of our prefabs, our rocks. And we can adjust these later as we require. For our sheep, we want to have multiple sheep in our groups, so let's just get rid of that filter and we'll um, turn off place in center so they get randomly placed around. Uh, let's also check the proximity 
So we'll change the proximity to maybe 0.7 of a meter and again with our rotation it's just our randomized the Y rotation. There we go. Our sheep's kind of just turning around. On our general tab, and this time we want to actually have a few more sheep. So um, maybe we'll make this about 75 per square meter. And we can just adjust that proximity slightly. Let's just make it um, maybe 0.8. There we go. So now you can see when we refresh the group designer, um, let's just turn off our zones for a minute. There we go. You'll see uh, the sheep and the rocks and the tree get randomly placed around. Let's see what that looks like in the scene. So we're going to close the group designer. We're going to reapply our groups to the scene and after a few moments we have a more random view of our groups. Let's put our original London trees back in. So let's just hide this group, expand our original one. There's our London trees. Turn those back on and repopulate our scene. And now we can see our groups are nicely populated along the riverbank. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching.